Hey, it's Chris here. In this video, our designer, JC, is going to show you how he designed the onboarding sequence for our newly launched Daily Parent Affirmations app. Now, it's really interesting to watch JC as he works his magic, and you are going to learn a lot, including how to design a great onboarding experience, number two, things to keep in mind as you design your own, and number three, the practical steps that he took to design the onboarding experience for our own Daily Parent app. With that said, I'll let JC take it away. Enjoy. In this lesson, we'll talk about how we designed the onboarding flow for the Daily Parent, which is our Affirmations app. But before we dive in, I want to talk about what makes a good onboarding experience. So for us, a good onboarding experience is responsive, meaning that the buttons should be working properly. The app should be fast from the get-go. The onboarding flow must also be intuitive, which means that everything must be easy to use, easy to interact with, and things on the onboarding flow must also be action-oriented, which means that the onboarding flow as a whole gets the job done, which typically refers to leading the user to the main experience of the app itself. And lastly, the onboarding flow must also be educational in a sense that the user should be able to learn as they dive deeper on how the app works. So responsive, intuitive, action-oriented, and educational. And these are the four principles that we took into consideration when we designed the onboarding experience. And it should also be the principles that you need to consider when you're building your own. Now, with this in mind, there are do's and don'ts to make sure that you observe these principles as you build your own onboarding flow. So first do is to make things simple, which means that you should not complicate things because like I said, this is the onboarding experience. This is likely the first impression and this experience can make or break the user's perception of your app. So if it's simple to use the moment they launch your app, then it's already a positive experience for them. So second is to keep the onboarding experience brief. So don't make it too long. Make sure to just present the necessary information so that they'll be able to know what to do after the onboarding flow. And lastly, do encourage action, which means that things on your onboarding flow, your screens must always be action oriented. So don't be boring. Every screen right here should always serve a purpose. So those are the three do's and don'ts. Now with that in mind, when designing an onboarding flow, there's actually not a lot that needs to be done, especially for daily parent, for example. In fact, when we go to different app repositories like Mobin, for example, you'll notice that majority of the flow follows a simple process to educate the user on what the app is all about. So it typically starts from the splash screen, like a summary of what the app is all about. And then it asks questions about the user and then some options to tailor the experience towards the app. And then after that, the second half of the onboarding flow is typically just asking for permissions to send out notifications, access gallery and all those stuff. And so the key learning number one here is to don't reinvent the wheel in the sense that you don't necessarily have to innovate at first. You just need to get things done to make sure that you have a minimum viable product or a minimum lovable product. In the context of Daily Parent, we are relatively new to the industry. We wanted to introduce something new, but at the same time, build something familiar. So what we wanted to introduce is an affirmations app for parents. Now there's already a lot of affirmations app out there, but there's limited number or very little number or only a handful number of affirmations app that's dedicated for parents. So that's something that new that we wanted to introduce to the world. But because there's already a lot of affirmations app, a lot of the onboarding patterns are already established. It's already being used by millions of people. We didn't have to reinvent the wheel. We just made sure to follow proven patterns to make the app easy to use and make the app familiar to those who are already using other aff affirmations app or app that's similar to us. In fact, one of our main inspirations for the Affirmations app used this VStack selection, like this list of selection in the onboarding flow. And we actually wanted to adapt the same approach in our onboarding to see for ourselves if it's successful. Like I said, this is still in the MVP stage. So we wanted to build fast. We wanted to ship fast and we want to let the users experience the app fast too. And so in the future, if this onboarding flow isn't converting properly, 
for our users, then it's a signal for us to innovate our onboarding flow and present these information differently. But for the context of building your own onboarding flow, shipping fast, shipping your first MVP, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. Make sure to use proven patterns and just build upon what others have built so far. Now, the second strategy on how to design an onboarding flow that gets the job done is to make people excited. Now, how do we make people excited is by using what we call design psychology practices. This is basically ethically hacking the psychology of our users, so tapping into their psychology and further convince them into engaging with our app. So if you want to learn more about design psychology practices, I'm not going to dive deeper into that topic, but you can visit websites like growth.design, builtformars.com, and mobin.com to help you understand what works for different types of people across different types of industries. For daily parent, one technique that we use in our onboarding flow is a technique called priming and transitioning. So to give you an example, this onboarding for screen was, is it, was initially a different screen. So it used to be the, like this one, onboarding 57. So I'll just drag it here. So what you see here, rather, I'll just put it side by side so you know the difference. So as you can see here, this one is the old version. This one is the new version. So in our old version, I renamed this old, this is the new. This is the initial design. It says benefits of affirmations for parents. Replace stress with inner peace, build deeper family connections daily, choose self-compassion over self-criticism, continue, all those things. By the looks of it, it already, it looks fine. But when we discovered a technique called priming and positioning, we transformed this screen into something like this. Finding the best affirmations to help you replace stress with inner peace, build deeper family connections, practice self-compassion. And what this essentially does is that if you understand this context, let me just put it here, right here. In this context, the user is selecting the categories that describe them best. So whether they are a new parent, working parent, or a stay-at-home parent, any of these types of parents, once they select on any of these selections, they click on continue. It doesn't make sense for them to arrive at the screen that talks about the benefits of affirmations for parents because they already have an idea on how affirmations get out. That's probably the reason why they downloaded the app in the first place. So the reason we changed this is, is because after selecting this, we wanted to make them feel that we are already processing the right affirmations based on the category that they selected. So by using this new screen, it's saying that we are in the process of finding the best affirmations to help you based on the categories that you selected on the screen before. And after this, the continue button will appear and then the rest of the onboarding flow will continue. So that's one design psychology technique that we implemented in the daily parent app. So as you can see, it's a very little change. Feels like a very minor change because as you can see, we just paraphrase the title. We put check marks instead of bullet points. And this basically conditions their mindset that we are already in the process of customizing the affirmations that will be suitable for them. So this is like a design psychology that sort of improves their perception for the app. Now you don't have to leverage all kinds of design psychology practices in your app. Make sure, just make sure to identify what works best. You can apply one or two. You don't have to go overboard because again, design psychology is about ethics, ethically encouraging people or hacking into the psychology of people. But once you've implemented one design psychology practice or one design psychology technique in one every flow, then you're all set. You don't have to populate your app design with different strategies or different psychology practices. Just one will go a long way. The next technique that I wanted to talk about here is to keep the screens relevant to you and the user's goals. So again, in the context of this app, our goal is to understand what works and how our audience will behave throughout the onboarding process, which means that we don't want to put 
onboarding screens just because a competitor has it or a similar app has it. So our goal is to, number one, encourage downloads, encourage recurring use, and also encourage conversion. By what we mean by conversion is that it should encourage people to keep using the app and they will actually use the app. This is the reason why we implemented notifications on the onboarding flow because we want to make sure or we want to encourage people to keep using our app. They can also customize the kinds of affirmations that they will see. They can also customize the app icon so that they can choose which app icon resonates the best for them. So we can introduce more styles of app icons, but for our MVP, we just introduced four simple styles. And then there's also the option to customize the theme of the app, like a default or a dark theme. And then lastly, there's also the option to customize or add a widget to the home screen so they can use the app without actually having to visit the app. So they can just see an affirmation on their home screen by adding a widget. So these are types of customizations allows them to have a sense of ownership, which eventually we believe will encourage conversion and will generate a positive experience for them. So if we zoom out a little bit, it all boils down to what kind of goals that you want to achieve in your onboarding flow. So in our case, like I said, we wanted to encourage downloads. We want them to keep on using the app, keep on visiting, keep on opening the app. And to do that, we have to make sure that they have a sense of ownership to the app. The app needs to resonate well with them. And that's the reason why we tap into the design psychology. We tap into the kind of parent they are, how frequent they want the notifications to be, the kinds of affirmations they want to see, the kind of app icon, the kind of theme that they want to have inside the app. Basically, like an overall sense of ownership so that they can keep on visiting it anytime they want. So with those three main things, those are the key strategies on how we implemented this onboarding flow. And we hope that this onboarding flow will perform well. We are still gathering data on how this onboarding flow will perform. But if you're also building your own onboarding flow for your own MVP, for your own first app, then this is the strategy that I would recommend to follow. So with that out of the way, good luck on designing your own first onboarding flow. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out via the chat on the lower right corner of your dashboard. And I'll see you soon.